and the last talk is going to be given by, by uh, Dr. Ross Cajun, discussing one of the most uh, interesting platforms that he has been developing using the Fly as a Model system. Thank you, thank you. And thanks for inviting me. Thanks, Adam, I appreciate it. So my laboratory studies the biology of therapeutics. Why do some therapies work? Why don't some therapies work? What can we learn from that, and how can we develop better ones using that knowledge? As some of you may know, we spend a lot of effort, especially with Arvind Dar, developing um, new lead compounds for cancer. I'm not going to talk about that today. Instead, I want to talk about something that I talk a lot less about, which is an unusual experimental fly to bedside clinical trial, which is really focused on colorectal cancer primarily. Colorectal cancer is a problem. So 50,000 Americans die every year of colorectal cancer. It's the number two killer of Americans cancer-wise. 750,000 uh, uh, people die worldwide of colorectal cancer. This is well known in the field, and a lot of effort has been put into developing therapeutics. But for example, if you have KRAS colorectal cancer, which accounts for more than half of uh, colorectal cancer deaths, there's really not much for you if you fail chemotherapy, which most do. So it's really a very difficult problem, and many attempts in clinical trials have been um, put into clinical trials, many drugs, um, all, virtually all which have failed. And what inspired this uh, clinical trial was really some data from a postdoc from my lab who's starting his own lab in September, Erdem Bangi. And what Erdem did is he took 16 drugs that failed in clinical trials for colorectal cancer, and he fed them to a one-hit fly, because I'm a fly guy, and a one-hit mouse with our collaborator uh, Owen Sanson at the Beetson Institute. And in each case, 13 of the 16 drugs worked beautifully to knock the tumors out, and these are standard mouse models. But then we moved the complexity up genetically, so four-hit, five-hit flies, and three-hit uh, mice, KRAS, APC, P53. And in that case, zero of 16 of these drugs worked, which is in fact what happened in the clinics. So we learned a lot from this. One of the things we learned is that uh, tumor complexity, capturing tumor complexity matters. Also, what we found was in these models, fly and mouse, that only drug cocktails would work, and that in fact inspired our work with Arvin in building uh, multi-targeting drugs or lead compounds. But what I'd like to talk about today is a clinical trial, and this is very much a team effort. Every Wednesday morning at 9 a.m. for the past four plus years, we've been meeting and building this clinical trial. Um, and I wanna give a lot of credit to Chris Masikowitz, Selena Ang, Marshall Posner for driving, the, as an oncologist, driving this forward. Eric uh, um, has put a lot of effort in bioinformatics. Michael Donovan has been um, invaluable. And also, especially Erdem Bangi, who has really run this uh, trial day to day. This is a summary of what we do in the trial. Uh, patient is diagnosed with colorectal cancer here at Mount Sinai or elsewhere. Uh, and they're given the option uh, to, um, to consent to the first step uh, into this trial. If they consent, we do a full genomic uh, makeup of the uh, patient's tumor. We do whole exome sequencing, copy number variation. We have 16 antibodies that we, and when I say we, I mean Michael Donovan, can stain on the tissue to look directly at activation of pathways. And based on all of that, we build for each patient their own personalized uh, fly avatar. And we've developed technology, and again, this is a royal we. Many people in the laboratory have worked on this. We've developed technology to build models that alter 18 or more genes in the fly, in this case, in the fly gut, and we can turn it on at the stage that we need to allow the fly to go through development. Once we build that fly avatar, we grow up 400,000 of them, and we have a room filled with robots. Uh, those robots move food and drug into each well of a deep 96-well plate, and I've spared you the, the videos of all this. Uh, so we have food and drug in each well, and then we screen the flies. We put 20 flies into each uh, well. We put an oxygen permeable lid on top. The flies hatch out. They eat the food, they eat the drug, and we look for, fly, for drug and drug cocktails that unkill the fly, and then we offer those back to the patient. And we're screening a library of 1,500 FDA-approved drugs through multiple rounds to create a cocktail. And I'm gonna have to second Arini here. I cannot believe that has already gone off. So this is just an example of the sort of data that we get. I'm gonna skip over this and go right to um, really our first responder. Um, I have to say, I was in a tumor board meeting this morning, so I missed part of the session. 
on um, a, a patient that I was just going to show you the data for that um, is just uh, starting uh, their therapy actually on Monday. But here's an example of a patient, nine hit uh, model, colorectal cancer patient in their mid 60s. They had failed all previous treatments after chemo, really in tough shape. Um, this shows on the top a scan uh, where a tumor next to the spinal cord is growing up the spinal cord, so they were also in bad shape in terms of pain. Um, we gave them a unique drug cocktail of a RAS pathway inhibitor and a bone reabsorption drug. They responded very strongly to this. On the first scan, they showed a 46% drop in, o, across the board of a tumor burden. That, um, that drop remains uh, steady after uh, month 11. They are starting to now show in the last two months emergent new tumors, and we've just uh, approved uh, by tumor board a second-line therapy, which we also found in that original screen, to now move them into second-line therapy while hopefully holding those original tumors at bay because those tumors continue to respond. So finally, the purpose of this, of course, is not to build a fly for every patient on the planet, although I guess that would keep me in business for a while. But the purpose is to ask the question, when we have these highly complex models, can we find a database as small as possible of drug cocktails that can work against these otherwise recalcitrant patients. And to date, at least if you're a fruit fly, we have a set of 11 cocktails, really four primary cocktails, that are effective against a broad, across a broad swath of these patient types. And we're looking forward to taking some of those themselves into clinical trials to see if they're more generally effective. So with that, I'll stop. Thank you very much. Thanks very much. Yeah.